a Canadian Radio Sanctuary podcast. You had another career before the fire department. I did, John. Yes, it uh, way back to uh, well, 1962 when I first started life here in Hope, British Columbia, uh, born and raised. And I don't know, there's a you know a lot of people that can say that, but I'm proud to to admit that. And uh, you know, spent my youth uh, in in Hope, down in uh, the area of the schools uh, of Coquihalla Elementary and C. E. Berry and Hope Secondary. Graduated from from Hope Secondary in 1980. We were a pretty large class, at least we thought we were, at some 103 or 4 people. That's kind of dropped over the years. Yeah, it started there and then right out of high school. In fact, I took, uh, in my grade 12 year, I enrolled in the Columbia School of Broadcasting and uh, took a broadcasting uh, course by a correspondence. It was, it was in that, during that time of my grade 12 year that I started to freelance. Uh, for the local newspaper doing some uh, photography, as well as working for the local radio station, which was CKGO, uh, part of Fraser Valley Broadcasters. Uh, so that started there doing some freelancing. In fact, the radio career, I guess, got its start on a Saturday morning feature called the Hope Secondary or the High School News. And I would go in there in the afternoons of a Thursday or Friday, record the high school news, which would run on a Saturday. And it got to a point where I was actually operating the board and recording it myself and didn't need anyone to do that. Therefore, I went through from Columbia. They wanted me to come down to Vancouver to do board training, as you, as you call it, to work all the, all, the, all the dials. And I said, well, I'm actually working at a radio station because I did start at CKGO doing some fill-in weekend work after doing the high school news. So that was where my, my career in radio uh, all began. Now, when you were uh, in school, what clicked with you in your mind to say, yeah, this radio thing seems interesting? I'd always had, you know, I, I, I've always been involved in theater, always been involved with the band, uh, you know, playing music. Being on stage and being out there front and center was kind of, a, kind of the appeal to me always. I, I kind of found early on that I could stand up in front of a class and actually read uh, passages from books and such with you know, really no hesitation or difficulty. Reading out loud was something I enjoyed doing. And then I got into, in grade 9, 10, I'm thinking, got into Vancouver Radio, and and my, my, you know, I wanted to be, that was my goal, was that I was either going to be a uh, a, a professional musician, I was either going to be a, a radio DJ, or I was going to be a, a bartender. That was my that was my my uh, list of goals uh, early on. That I wanted to be out there in entertainment and in and, and clubs and things. So again, I used to do the the DJ thing uh, for dances and such. And probably around grade 11, 12, I started to do a couple of those gigs. And uh, then I, I really hooked into into 14 C Fun in Vancouver. That was my radio station that I wanted to work for. I wanted to be uh, a rock jock at C Fun. And I wanted to be like the um, the late great Daryl B. That was my uh, my idol in the day, listening to that voice. And it's where uh, I, through uh, another couple of uh, folks at uh, at the Fraser Valley Radio Group, got the nickname at the time Tommy D, and carried that on for the rest of uh, of the radio career. At any rate, interesting. Yeah, Daryl Burlingham has inter- influenced many people. Yeah. So, so what stations were you at? Uh, I, I know at one point, uh, a fascinating part of your career, uh, from my perspective, was Satellite Radio Network. That's correct. I started, again, at CKGO in Hope, which is part of Fraser mm-hmm. Valley Radio, at uh, CH, CKGO, CK, CHWK, and CFER in Abbotsford. So part of that network, we fed newscasts and such from Hope. Uh, to the uh, Western Information Network, which was at CKNW then. It was uh, after that that I moved from on-air into, uh, into sales uh, at the radio station, trying to you know, further and make more money, obviously. Uh, and then I had an opportunity to move to Vancouver to, uh, you know, and I always wanted to be in major market, right? That, that goal of being on the air in Vancouver and at CFUN was still, you know, part of my, my dream. I ended up working for a, a beverage alcohol company and became a liquor sales rep with Hiram Walker and the company that owns uh, Canadian Club Rye Whiskies and, and all kinds of different uh, products. 
that we ended up uh, being one of, one of the sales reps in Vancouver. So I moved into the city my very first time ever living by myself in an apartment ever, uh, leaving Hope and, and living in Richmond and, and going out making calls. This is a company that at the time sent me to, as part of a team, to Europe where we took wine uh, sommelier training mm-hmm. and ended, ended up uh, you know, seeing the world, to, so to speak, and learning all this craft. But it was the company that, after the Gulf War, I believe, had lost as a worldwide organization a great deal of money. And then they started to, to, to fold in. And the company, the sales force, the entire sales force across Canada was, was let go. It was 30 years ago, actually, that they were let go. And we were gone, and it was where I connected with a uh, old friend from uh, from Fraser Valley Radio. Got me together and introduced me to a few people, and I started doing a weekend operating shift at CKWX in Vancouver when it was a country station. And then I was pulled over to the all night and weekend show on the satellite radio network and did a program called uh, Country Coast to Coast. And we were on the air as the all night uh, people, all night radio show for some 65 radio stations across Canada at the time. (laughs) That's quite an amazing experience to have such a broad reach, eh? Totally a broad reach where at the time, and brilliant at the time, in, in today's world of like satellite radio and such, where you can listen to you know a radio station centered out of out of Nashville and be you know broadcast around the world, we were broadcast out of Vancouver, but we never really told anyone we were live from Vancouver. We were we were your local radio station. You know, I, I recall a story where I was the uh, I was the all night guy, and I relayed this story when I was actually in Gander, Newfoundland. I was doing a, a presentation at a fire conference in Gander, Newfoundland, I said, you know, back in the day, in 1990, 1991, I was the all-night guy on the radio station in Gander, uh, albeit for only a couple of hours because of the time zone uh, switch. We came on at midnight Pacific, and, and I had people phone in looking to make a request at 4.30 in the morning their time, and they couldn't believe when I told them that I was actually in Vancouver broadcasting all the way across Canada. It was quite remarkable for them, I think. <laughs> 